I'm not very technical. I've always been a person that just see ball, hit ball, and just see my shot, try to hit it, and just try to think the least amount of possible that I can just to kind of simplify things. To solve the mystery of Thomas's length, we summoned Dr. Robert Neal, an acclaimed golf physicist and founder of Golf Biodynamics. How's it going? Hi, thank you, Robert Neal. Thomas, nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you. you. You look at him and he's not physically impressive, and I asked him if he was pretty powerful as a, an athlete, and he said, no, I wouldn't rate myself as quick or fast. And so I said, wow, that's, that's it, it, interesting. I just focus a lot, like, you know, on my joints and uh, flexibility and, like, my hips. A little bit more loose and a little more flexible to where I'm going to get the most absolute possible out of my weight and my height and my speed. His body speeds show that he is fast, that he's probably got a lot of fast twitch muscle fibers that allow him to generate speed very rapidly. For a precise conclusion, we hooked Thomas up to Dr. Neal's golf biodynamics technology. What it'll, it'll do is measure exactly the position your hands and body are in space at every moment during the swing. I'm, I guess, excited to, to see, uh, you know, what all this stuff's about, but uh, I'm kind of scared to see it at the same time. I don't know what it's going to look like. So like this, facing me. We'll do left and right shoulders. I know you haven't done this, this sort of thing before, so it'll feel a little weird when you first start swinging on it. Yeah, I didn't really know what to expect. I felt like I had a tail. Wave your left hand. That's so crazy. <laughs> yeah, I would hope I'm a little better looking than that guy. <laughs> and I have legs. This should be pretty interesting, the first shot. That was almost a shank right there. I didn't shank it, but I sure laid the sod over it. After some time to get used to the equipment. I'm getting there. I, I still haven't hit one flush yet. Actually, hit that one kind of good. Nice and solid, right? Yeah, pretty nice. It was time to record the actual data with the driver. After 17 total shots, Thomas sat down with Dr. Neal for a preliminary look at the readings. So, Justin, this, this is what your swing looks like in 3D. You can see, for example, how you move the club down through here. Great extension through the through the follow through and, and so forth. Right out of the middle of the club as well. That's one of your secrets, but it's it's a secret that we knew about in physics, but there are not too many people who can actually do it. Cool stuff. Next, it was back to the lab to find out exactly how Thomas is able to launch the ball so well. Three key things that I picked out in terms of how the club was delivered. Number one, a beyond perfect smash factor, which is the ratio of club head speed to ball speed, giving an indication of impact efficiency. Now, theoretically, the limit's 1.50. Justin hit 17 shots. The average was 1.52, which is really remarkable. It means he hits the same spot, the sweet spot on the club face, virtually all 17 of those shots. Number two, Thomas delivers the highest launch angle on tour. The ball takes off at the highest angle relative to the ground, but it's really low spinning. It's one of those phenomena that are just really difficult to produce. Number three, in order to get that high launch angle, Thomas delivers a high angle of attack. It's the angle that the club head is moving as it contacts the ball. His average was almost five degrees up. And the tour average is 1.3 degrees down. So this combination really optimizes what he's able to do with the club at, at impact with the driver. It's interesting to go and look at what his body does in order to create those club head dynamics. Thomas lifts his pelvis up to three inches off the ground at impact. By comparison, some Remax long drive competitors lift up to five inches. That is one of the power moves that we see. If someone isn't able to raise this up, they're not able to push off the ground, they're just not able to generate the same speed. His whole body, the pelvis, lifts in the late part of the downswing and it lifts very rapidly. 
this assists him in moving the handle of the club up, which then flattens the arc of the club head and allows him to head up on the ball. That impact, he gets his hands forward a long way. That's very unusual for a driver. Another pivotal characteristic found through Thomas's sequencing and timing data is that Justin rotates his body 25% faster than the average tour player. He times very precisely when he accelerates one segment past the other. And so that allows him to really transfer the energy from the big parts of the body, the core, out to the arms and hands and eventually to the club head. Someone like Dustin Johnson, tall, long levers, they don't need to rotate as fast to get the same amount of speed. As a little guy, you need to have the ability to rotate rapidly because you don't have long levers. What's really interesting with Justin is that he found this out kind of by himself. He's got a lot of natural sporting ability coordination because he didn't have to be taught that. It's just kind of trying to use your athletic ability to your advantage and we know what we have to do just from practicing so many times and we just try to, you know, recreate that. It's unbelievable the stuff technology can do and it was cool to just to kind of see it all done on myself. Now I'll have an official answer when people ask me, you know, why I hit it the length that I do.